welcome to the OFX podcast. I'm Dave Claxton, and along with me is the my the mall mile maniac, <laughs> Bethany McChesney, who apparently is stinky. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm just, I'm in the middle of the, one of the most chaotic weeks of my life. So, um, well, I'll just, we'll get into it. But yeah, yeah. so I ran the, uh, so the Deca Mile in Strathroy. Um, I, so I ran that event, um, posted it this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, I had already registered for this half marathon and it was just the way it worked out. So I woke up Sunday morning, drove to Burlington, ran a half marathon, came back and then moved my entire life, my apartment, um, back into my parents' place. It's just the way it worked out. The place that I was renting, um, they were taking over the apartment because their family was expanding. They were having another baby. So it kind of just, it is what it is. Um, so, yeah, I my whole life is now in a bedroom in my parents' place, <laughs> and um, I've been kind of living out of boxes, and I just don't know where my shampoo is right now, <laughs> so I have a hat on because I haven't washed my hair since after my race on Sunday. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'll find it. It's fine. It's gotta <laughs> but, be a, but on the upside, you raced really well. Yeah, I think, you know, it's one of these interesting things sometimes. So, like, I come from a road racing background, and I've done this stuff a long time. And I find, so we were kind of talking, and um, Jeff and I raced it together, and he was like, you know, next time, I wonder how you would do on on fresh legs. And I'm like, you know, sometimes it's just coming into a race where you have zero expectations and you just kind of show up and uh you let all of the like the stress of the event go and you just focus on it enjoying it and let your body do what it's capable of and that was my mentality with the half marathon um we've done a lot of runs that are that distance and i kind of had a good feeling about what we were capable of jeff's never done uh, actual half marathon race before and so i just kind of told him you know don't think too much about the pace just sit on my hip and let me just run even splits the whole time and yeah it worked out and we actually ran a time a lot better than he really expected so we finished in a 137 so we averaged which is a 437 kilometer i don't know the mile conversion for that and uh yeah it's it's just it's one of these things where our our bodies are capable. You just kind of let you don't let your mind get in the way and don't start overthinking. Oh well, I've done. You know, I did a a deca mile individual. I did a deca mile sprint. You know, I'm probably going to feel fatigued. If you just kind of shut all of that out and just let your body do what it's capable of, um, our our body itself is capable of a lot more. When our you just kind of take your the mental um, the the chatter that goes on in the head, just kind of shut that off a little bit and just kind of roll with it and let your body do what it's its thing. So that's what I did. And yeah, it turned out pretty well and we felt pretty good. So isn't it like like Goggins things or whatever that when you think you're done, you have 60% left or some crap like that? I don't know. Yeah. And it's well, I'm I'm not sure the numbers that he said, but it's true. And our our mind is is really what stops us because our body is truly capable of a lot more than sometimes what your mind tells you. So yeah, you think about that a little bit. And when people get into racing, especially when you're racing these double weekends, um, which happens often in Spartan, <laughs> where people kind of want to race two weekends and two races in a weekend. Um, but yeah, your body is capable. Like you'll be achy or whatever on the second day, but it doesn't mean that the body is less capable. Um, so yeah, you just kind of shut off the chatter in the back of your mind and just let the body do what it's capable of and roll with it. I got uh, that Goggins thing, but I, I like I like Tara's better. Tara, Tara's is just, um, you can hurt harder. Mm -hmm. yeah always I like hurt that harder. Too. and i'm like that that just works that works that's, that's a good one do you notice my board is rebuilt i'm back more stuff we're here we're we're, we're i don't know if there's more mm -hmm. but it's been rebuilt mm -hmm. i didn't do it <laughs> <laughs> no lazy 
<laughs> but we um we should actually you did your half marathon didn't um didn't we get a new canadian marathon record thing yeah so cam levins set the canadian marathon record um in tokyo this weekend well 20 i don't know the number 204 205 um you sent it to me and i think i think it was 204 204 high i think so yeah that's that's kind of what i'm thinking yeah cam levin's a phenomenal athlete from canada um he's been grinding it out <clears throat> And then Krista gonna... Duchenne also at the same time. So Krista Duchenne is 44. She was Olympian in 2016. Um, this was her 22nd marathon. She set a master's record over 45. So 45, sorry. She's 45 over um, in a 238. And she said that would be her last um, elite level marathon. So it was her... 22nd elite level marathon so yeah i mean that's pretty solid for someone well, 238 that's like faster than a hunter or faster than a lot of those guys you know i, I think that it's just nuts i think it's it's a little slower than Megita. i think Megita was like a two actually it was right around there because i think he was like a 238 yeah oh yeah because, was he? Because i think they've accepted as like the the Clydesdale marathon is like 235 or something like that. And I don't think he beat that. So so the Clydesdale the thing is interesting because it's, it's kind of a hearsay because they don't make you weigh in the morning of. So it's kind of what people generally accept. Um, so yeah, it could be, it, I know it's somewhere in the two thirties, but. <clears throat> I think someone should do it, like do it all the way, like weigh yourself right before. I mean, I'm like, Hunter did it originally with the Murph, and then uh, Alec Blemis did it just a little bit better, and you know made it official. And now people can say, "Well, this guy's the fastest. This guy's the fastest Murph." But no, you look on the video, and Alec Blemis is the one who boom, 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 put it out there and did it properly. Someone's got to do that with the with the Clydesdale Marathon. Just weigh in right before, yeah, run the race, and you're done. I agree. Yeah, I think that uh, Seb Conrad. I think he's another one that might be. Uh, right up there he said i guess he did one and he was fast like he's got really fast man but he he wasn't quite 200 pounds so he wore a vest or something oh put well, him over. so it's not the same doesn't yeah, count in my mind but he is somebody mm -hmm. that if you put on like maybe 10 pounds five ten pounds he'd be one of you he's up and coming at high rocks big time yeah if he wants to be i think he ran a 61 on his first one wow and um and said he was absolutely in agony the next day because he did not prepare at all <laughs> he just oh. one of those guys and he's about a buck 95 200 close to 200 right around there <clears throat> so he'll be interesting to see in the future if he gets right down to it and yeah and, puts it all know, together puts it all together it'd be nice to see him keep going um mm -hmm. should we talk about your your mall mile i mean that was that was the big thing the mall mile um yeah, it went so well. Um, we... Wait, wait. For, first off, first off, how nervous were you? Okay, so <laughs> I thought pre-race dreams were awful. Like, you have these dreams leading up to races that kind of scare you, where it's like, you know, you forget your shoes, you have to go to the bathroom, like, in the middle of the race. Like, but pre-race organizing a race dreams are another level so i was having dreams leading up to it where i had dreams that the mall was bombed um <laughs> <laughs> i had dreams about um oh my goodness just crazy things like well and one of them almost kind of came through about the snow blizzard yeah. um but it was not as bad as but yeah i had these just crazy dreams about all these or like um like old lady, sorry, like elderly people, wall, <laughs> mall walkers uh, with their walkers being like pummeled down by like a Juan Carlos. <laughs> like, <just> because, like, <laughs> these awful 
total nightmares. So I couldn't see for the days before, just like, hey, we have to present, I'm sorry, we have to prevent like the bombings and like the, the mall walkers being knocked over and like all these scenarios, which obviously a lot of these things are out of my control, but wow, organizing a race, nightmares are another level. So um everything went totally fine we did have a bit of a snowstorm come in the night bit, before yeah. <laughs> we got <laughs> Which, freaking dumped on yeah and so i did get stuck coming and i was a little bit late coming but it was all fine because i had given myself ample time um and is we didn't have too many people that didn't show because it, things did get cleared pretty quickly um but yeah we did have a bit of a snowstorm coming in um, but otherwise everything ran super smoothly. And, um, as far as I'm concerned, it was a huge success, lots of positive feedback. So this mall situation, I think was just, it was so great. The mall was, um, almost the exact distance down and back. All the store owners were completely on board. Everyone kind of shut their inside doors so that no one was randomly walking out into the mall. Um, my gym itself uh, helped so much with all of the logistics of everything. Everyone kind of came together. Everyone was really excited about it. So everyone helped where they could. And, um, I have a lot of connections in this small town. So everyone was kind of donating different things where they could. And yeah, it just, it was such a really good, feel good event that kind of brought a little bit of the community together. And then people came in from, um a fair distance also to do their mile it was the first mile in canada which was really cool so people were kind of hyped about that um yeah and then we had some really fast times laid down so and i mean it's a fast course there was there's no elements that you're dealing with being inside the mall um you're not kind of sliding through a man door going in and out of a gym um yeah, it was kind of the perfect setup to run some fast time. So yeah, I had a blast anyway. So I hope every, I, I haven't like all positive feedback so far. So, so uh, I'll say something about the setup and this is kind of funny because this, when we, we got there uh, a little bit later than we'd originally anticipated. So we got there like two o'clock. We thought we'd be there at one and walked in and you guys were setting up. And I don't know who it was, but they said to me, oh, we, we got an idea, but we were waiting for you to 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 see what you thought. And then I completely, like, Ryan and I completely changed everything. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of moving stuff around just randomly, I'm like, Bethany's going to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had, in my head, I had planned it in different um, different setups too. So I didn't really know how the flow of it would all go. And if anyone's ever planned something like this, like the flow of an event is everything. And uh, um, like I set up workouts every day and you're always thinking about the flow of everything. So this was very new to me. And so with the hallway in the mall, we, there's these big planner boxes and working around this was a bit of a task. So feeling out the flow of the event stress me out a bit so and I mean I I don't I expected you to come in and kind of revamp <laughs> things because you understand the flow yeah. of these races very well also um so yeah I mean it, and it worked out quite well the way it went it was good it was it was it was good and you, you said we have some weird times um Connor Connor came in and was like the first was he the first guy of the day to run yeah and ran like a, a 2110 or something along that lines, yeah. which was just fantastic. Mm -hmm. And had never done done a, a DECA event before. He came from really far away too. And he was like like three that or four hours. Drive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I stayed in a hotel the night before because of the snowstorm and all that. Yeah. And then later in the day, Pat Pat, Pat laid down. A, Pat, yeah, laid down a 2030 something, I think. Yeah. He was just mm -hmm. flying. I thought he was gonna, I thought he was gonna burn out. Like he he did trail off, but wow, mm -hmm. he held it together pretty good. I was impressed. That was a great run. Mm -hmm. And there yeah. were some other other good ones too. Um, uh, well, you Robbie put down Moss. A... Um, who is? I'm just trying to check here. My, uh, but yeah. So Robbie Moss put down a good time. Juan put down a Juan good time. Man. Juan Carlos. Um, uh, Dana. Dana put down a good time. Yeah, and then um, we had Rachel Schreiber, also from my gym, put down a 24-minute. Um, 
Yeah. So uh, yeah, a couple of my ladies have been really gearing up for this too. So we had a couple of women that were under the 25 mark for the mile, which is pretty impressive. There was a lot of PRs, uh, myself included. Like I PR'd by, I think it was like 15 seconds or so. You PR'd by about the same, maybe like one or two seconds more, I think. Yeah. 20 or so seconds. Yeah. Which they haven't got on the global leaderboard yet. I was kind of hoping they'd be there by now, but they're not there yet. Um, and we went head to head again. We went head to head again, and I have complaints. Oh, do you? <laughs> I was tricked. See, I thought I was running Saturday morning. Oh, okay. So, so, so what happened was, uh, Ryan and I on was it? I guess it was Thursday night because I knew I wasn't working Friday. And we have about 8 million anniversaries a year. Uh, I don't know. Every every week's another anniversary. I, I, I can't keep track. So we had pizza. And Thursday night, and I had like 12 slices of pizza. And that is not an exaggeration. That's the exact number. It's like half a party size pizza. I ate myself. And then that day for lunch, I had six before we left. <laughs> All thinking I'm running Saturday morning. And then I get there and, and I'm like, I'm told, oh, well, you and Beth are running tonight. And I'm like, we are <laughs> like I don't want to run tonight. <laughs> so Beth put a weapon on me because of that. That's my excuse. It's my racer excuse, and uh, and and home team advantage and all that stuff. And that's what I'm going with. That's that's <laughs> I'm gonna hang my hat on that. But still, push me to a PR. So that's good. I'm okay with that. Yeah, it was good. I don't. My chances weren't very good on that race to begin with. <laughs> yeah, a couple of times I did feel a pizza come back. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> It was rough. It was rough near the end yeah. for sure. But it was good. Yeah. It was good. It I was mean, good fun. I think if we're gonna start laying out excuses, <laughs> <laughs> I think my couple of weeks before the race of not <laughs> sleeping and moving and packing and all the other things. I don't think it's a diabolical yeah. plan. <laughs> anyway, so I ended up what I run, I run a twenty two fifty two, I think. And previously, I had run at Atlantic City a 23-12. Mm -hmm. So I was happy with that. So that's good. Mm -hmm. It was still a lot of fun and still good. And uh, and uh, again, I'll put it out to, to Juan Carlos. It's the first time you beat me at any deck event, so good for you, Juan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll see you on the next strong when there's no running. Um, yeah. The relay. It doesn't seem to matter what relay it is in any race. It's just the best. Yeah. So much fun. Mm -hmm. I so when I when I originally posted this event, the relays for the mile didn't exist yet. And then two weeks before the event, Deca we had a Deca affiliate um, call, and they announced that now Deca strongs and deca miles could have teams and maybe it wasn't two weeks it might have been a bit before it maybe it was a month um so then i tacked these on to the end of my event um and i i had a lot of people who were like oh i would have rather done that but they had already signed up so i was like well sign up for both like yeah. you know you still get your individual time um but and a lot of people did do that and again by far everyone talks about their team race there is just so much excitement around doing it with your workout buddy that is like just so different than doing it as an individual and like there's you talk about like your strategies what worked what didn't um like I also find you push to a whole other level when you're doing teams. And I had a lot of clients that were like oh my gosh all of a sudden like they were like I was pulling so fast on my skier like I've never seen numbers like that like there's just a whole other element when you do the teams where you do stuff that you never thought was possible um and the, okay one of the most funny things of the whole weekend I have so my I have a client Dana and her partner Crystal Dana is a beast yeah. and um so her partner, Crystal, she had encouraged her to run the team race and Crystal finished the sled or the tank push 
tank push pull and they were then you run together just like with a deca fit for the final run and crystal had started to puke into our buckets that we had and dana being a super super competitive person that she was didn't want them to stop their to, to stop the race um and so she yells at her partner run with the bucket <laughs> <laughs> so her partner is running down the mall holding the puke bucket while she's puking so that and running back and dana takes over the burpees on the way back as she's holding the puke bucket and dana again a mother of three and so her daughters are all sitting there i was like your mom is an absolute savage i can't believe she just said that to her race partner <laughs> um but to me it was one of the funniest moments i've ever seen and but again like her partner would have never done that if it was an individual race, you're not going to pick up the puke bucket and run with it, but you do these things in individual races because you don't want to let your partner down. So it's just this whole other level of racing that I just think it just brings out like a, just a completely different person, but I love watching the team races. Oh, far away. And, and so we did, when we did the, the, our unofficial strong relay, because we forgot to sign up a pure impact. Um, <laughs> so I, I felt afterwards i'm like you know we did pretty good but in reality i thought like i kind of i thought i let us down on that one i thought i didn't go as well as well as i could our strategy wasn't great and there's bethany banging out 52 seconds of burpees and i'm like oh, that's not was not a good one for me i was not great so i was quite happy to redeem myself on this one because i thought in this one we were a lot more 50 50 effort wise mm -hmm. and uh yeah we can smashed it yeah <laughs> we had a we had a really smart strategy i think which is good because we whipped that up like just like how about this okay let's do that and it worked really well mm -hmm. but it was it was good and like so we we ended up with 1711 mm -hmm. which right now i think is still almost a minute faster than anybody else has done it yeah and hopefully it holds for a oh, little sorry bit. sorry it was a minute faster than anybody else has done it except for jeff and trevor but we're still faster <laughs> yeah well co-ed teams for sure yeah but we're still faster than they were anyway. but I do yeah. look forward. I do look forward to seeing who eventually beats it, right? Because I mean, I know it'll get beaten, but you know, I'm pretty proud of that one. I thought that was pretty good, and I know I'm um, like, I didn't look at her running stats, but I know you were flying. You were absolutely killing the runs. Um, yeah, I'm like she's 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 back already. Like this is I need more break, <laughs> more of a rest. So the mile is so interesting because it's not like the fit where you can't just have a stations person and a run person because the run is so short. So the stations person gets no break. So you have to, the run person has to take stations. So we did split it up in a way that I would do a run station run in order to give you enough, enough time to smash certain stations yeah. that are to our advantage. So I find the strategy with the mile is quite different than doing the deck of fit team race so oh. i think we did quite well with our strategy actually i think so too and uh yeah yeah we did like you said we 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 strategized it mostly for me to capitalize on the strengths i had and then you to capitalize on the strengths you had and it worked yeah. worked great it's awesome i so on the on the, the team thing it looks like they're going to be at san antonio like the 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 relays for the mile and the strong will be at uh at world's so I'm like that's yeah. cool. I'm like, I wonder how we sit. <laughs> I wonder how we'll sit come that time. No. So then I'm like, yeah, I could end up racing, like, w like teams, like I three was... team races, you know, and then like someone could potentially race three, sorry, six races. Yeah, yeah, six. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it six or is it more than six? Well, if you did the strong mile and fit on your own, and then if you got in a team race yeah. for each. Yeah. 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 I guess those six different decisions will have to be made by a lot of people. Like decisions yeah. were made last year for a lot of people who made relays, but wanted to do, you know, the fit, like, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I know a lot of people had that, especially the, the co-ed thing. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what people decide. And I mean, I'm not going to qualify for the elite, elite men obviously but age group you know strong i have a shot at and uh, i'm hoping to qualify for the fit relay and then i mean I, I would think that we're we're on pretty good ground to qualify for this so i mean yeah decisions will have to be made but i mean yeah. i would think obviously for you and i mean this seems obvious to me is your number one priority would be 
defending the the relay you and Heather. Yeah. That should be yeah. not just defending that one, but going for the record on that. Yeah. I think should be yeah. top priority on that one. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's 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 weird. Um and then we'll see when we hit some of the deck of fits what whether the qualifications we end up with. And yeah. I don't know. It's it's it, it's it will end up making a lot of choices to be made. But it again it'll bring more people to the event. So it's it's great. Yeah, I do think the relay thing provides like, and especially still, you even still have people still worried about trying a strong or whatever, and well, we'll do the relay and it works. And I think that actually does work. It's not bad. Yeah, it does. They had um the first one over in the UK too. I don't know if we talked about it the last time, but they had their first UK deck event, and uh, it went over pretty well. I think they had like a hundred people at a strong. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. I didn't so, see that. No, it looked pretty good. Uh, good friend Emma Waring was there and. J oh, okay. so a lot of a lot of cool people. EMK, a lot of a lot of cool, well known people were there. So mm-hmm. looks like it went well and it's getting a good takeoff in the UK. Um all right. So I think that's enough DECA because we well, I mean, we could talk about that race all day. It was just so much fun. We had a blast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had what else did I have here? Okay, I wanted to talk about just a little bit. Of, okay, did you watch any of the Gov Games stuff? Um, a little bit, but there wasn't, I just, I kind of watched people's stories, but I didn't see live feeds and stuff. I watched live feed and, uh, so I watched a bit and I saw, uh, team Colorado with all, 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 all the cool people we know, <laughs> let's stuff on it, you know, with Chris and Rich and Rylan and Ryan Kent and Jack Bauer yeah. and VJ Jones and VJ. all together. And they, they, they look great. The first, I watched the first event that killed it. They looked awesome. Um, and the event looked kind of cool. Um, and I'm not, you're not even going to go through the whole thing, but it looked really more like a cross between Ninja Warrior and Wipeout. You know, like yeah. a team, team Ninja Warrior and a Wipeout thing with some puzzles involved, which was okay. But then I watched a little bit more. And uh, it was actually when I was watching, and, and shockingly was, well, not shockingly, but it was Hunter's team I was watching at the time because it just jumped around a lot. It was really hard to follow, but that was okay. And then Hunter's team, they were doing this one where they had to like pull across this rope and they were in harnesses from bungee cords and they all had to hit a buzzer. And look, it actually looked like a dumb setup. Like it looked like the, the, the race, the course designers miscalculated hitting that buzzer and how it being it, like, cause it didn't even look possible. So Hunter's team were like taking off their harnesses off their shoulders and just leaning forward on their hips and then hit the buzzer that way. I'm like, well, that doesn't look right. And then I saw another team try it and then they sent them back and told them they couldn't do it. And all of a sudden I started seeing all these different, you know, officiating in areas and it got seems really off and really bad. And then I looked at the scoring system and it was enough to make you cry. Like I like, you know, I can understand the stuff pretty good. And it was like, this is nuts. It's just crazy. And then the whole thing lost me, and I, I just said, oh, forget it, and I stopped watching. Because I was like, and this was people I know and like and care about, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, I can't watch this. This is just, I was really disappointed, because I thought it was going to be really cool. And from yeah. what I've heard from some of the people competing, I think they were pretty disappointed, too. Except for Leon, who won. Congratulations, Leon. That's awesome. <laughs> Did they win-win? Yeah, Leon's team won one. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think, so each team member got like 25 grand. Yeah, wow. so I mean, there was real money here to get and give away, and it was kind of flighty, like just what it just I don't know, yeah, but it's, uh, it's Dubai, it's just very typical <laughs> Dubai, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, got it's lots like, of money, we'll just do what we, we have want. lots of money, and like we can make everything like your wildest dreams, but yeah. it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to be super smart and well done, <laughs> and that's the way it <laughs> seemed. And it was a really expensive looking setup, like they put the money into it, you yeah. can tell, but. It just was like, ah, I was like, this could have been freaking amazing. And it's mm-hmm. just not. And it's mm-hmm. not. So, Gov Games, you know, yeah, whatever. It wasn't, I, like I said, I, I couldn't watch it. I just didn't forget it. I'm not interested. It didn't do it for me. So, I guess that's a, that's an F from the Gov Games. Um, mm-hmm. The other thing I wanted to talk about was, and this one too is Battle Bunker. So Battle Bunkers, Hunter, and um, Austin's thing. Um, Austin, forgive me, I forget his last name, but he's a 
bit of a YouTube guy. He does a battle bus where he goes to gyms yeah. and they you do pull ups for cash or squats for cash. It's kind of cool. It's not bad. Seems like a really good guy. But they set up. They had the battle bunker last year, which uh, I believe was Ida one for the women and Isaiah Vidal for the men. Mm -hmm. So now they're doing the virtual one, almost like a CrossFit Open to feed to qualify for this year's um which is cool i'm good with that i like that that's that's great um and they're giving away fifty one thousand dollars for the competition again love seeing good money thanks but, um so they're going to start here and this these are the workouts so the first workout is a 1600 meter capacity test so i it's a, it's a mile run mm -hmm. and you, you got to do it on a track from my understanding which I like. Good. But this happens on April 2nd. And April 2nd in Canada, tracks are not great still. Uh huh. But anyway, so there's that. Then it seems the second one is a three rep max strip press and back squat. <laughs> okay. Again, mokey doke. And then the, the last one is a, looks like a bit of a, Metcon of 30, 20, 10 dumbbell thrusters slash lateral burpees. So those are your combine workouts. And then if you qualify from there, you go to the regionals and then from the regionals to the hypercon games. Um, I don't know what I think about those workouts. I mean, yeah. It's... Okay. First, I want to say one thing. The one last year, I liked the workouts Hunter put together. I thought they were pretty good. The scoring system was idiotic. Yeah. But the workouts themselves were kind of cool. So I, I'm going to go and like give, I'm going to, I really was not impressed last year because of that whole scoring system. That I'm not telling anybody that whole attitude of, well, you should just run faster. Don't worry about where your points were. You don't even know. Mm -hmm. I hate that crap. So, but I'm going to give it a pass as first time event. Let's give it a go again. I don't know what I think about those, those workouts. So what do you think? What do you like? What's your initial thought? Um, like the mile one, that's great. Um it's it does make it tough for people that live in locations where you're not gonna get a cleared track. Like that's a logistical issue. Um I don't really like the max weight of things because most of when you get into the competition itself. It's not really what they do. Like it's, it's, we're not trying to, f it's not a strongman competition typically mm. from what I remember with battle bunker. So I don't really like the max weight stuff. Uh, yeah. And then, I mean, the last one, sure. That's probably the most applicable to what the race is actually like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I think mixing it in with some more of like your functional fitness movements would have maybe made a little bit more sense again with a, like a little bit more than like strict presses and stuff. So, you know, mixing it up a bit between like your strength and running things. So maybe instead of a flat mile, adding in your mile with things mixed in. Um, but again, when you start adding those things, elements in, you just get a bit more with your judging aspect. So, and that's what I'm thinking right there. The mile, great. Four times around a track. That's, yeah. again, I'm with you that I don't like the possible, like for us, it could possibly suck. We could be in the middle of a snowstorm April 1st. Who knows? Yeah. But that said, you can't please everybody. So be it. That's, yeah. that's a, that's a fair test. Um, I look at the other ones. Strict press, back squat, thrusters, and lateral burpees. Judging is going to be a freaking nightmare. And it will be a nightmare. And we've seen this from OCR. So yeah. It'll be the same mm -hmm. thing. And it'll be just a shit show of judging. You do not want thrusters. You do not want squats. You don't want to have to worry about that breaking parallel. You don't want strict presses because as soon as you put the word strict in, yeah. I was like, well, did they did they move their hips a little bit? Yeah. Did they bend like, their knees? <laughs> yeah, mm. I yeah. So I don't like any of those for virtual competitions, and, and which essentially that's what that part of it is. I applaud the effort, but I think that those could have been well better thought out. Um, 
prize money for the finishers. I mean, it's great. 20 grand for first, 4,000 for um, second, 1,000 for third. It's a big drop off. But what the hell? I mean, you're giving out some good money. I don't care. That's cool. I think that's all right. Um, and I think it should go over well. I like this is one thing I will give absolute cool credit for. The virtual part, as far as I know, is free. Oh, nice. And that that's super cool. I think that's fantastic. So I don't know. I'm on the reserve judgment as best I can, but I'm really skeptical about those movements and and how it will end up in standards. Will you participate? Probably not. No. <laughs> no. I mean the the three rep max thing is just not for me. Yeah. And it's 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 not not that this competition has to be for me, but for me it just kind of takes away my interest from it. I'm just man, I couldn't be bothered. And um yeah. Um I would be interested in the actual event when they get there. Like last year I liked the Especially that second event with the with the sandbag where you're doing thrusters with the sandbags and, and all that stuff mm -hmm. and cleans it. I, I thought that was pretty cool. Reminded me a lot of the movements of TMX back in the day. And then, mm -hmm. you know, and plus that that heavy, what was it, a, a ruck and a row and a run. I mean, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Other than the judging craziness, but the, the event itself was cool. And that obstacle course at the end, I thought was awesome. So yeah. I would like to do that, but the yeah, the three rep max. I'm anything that's max. I just don't like max stuff, and maybe it's just because I'm getting old. Mm -hmm. But it just, I don't know. Again, that it's, it's strongman competition to me, or, or CrossFit, and and it's their event. They do what they want, but yeah, that just kind of when I when I saw that, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, I'm not gonna bother. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I might do that last workout depending on how it's set up but i don't think i'll submit it i'll just do it to see what my score is and mm -hmm. there but hopefully they give good participation and i can imagine that the end will be very good will be you'll get some great people out there doing some oh yeah awesome things to competing for 20k i like generally i like to see a little more spread and paying a little deeper but it's not my money so it's yeah. easy for me to say i agree mm -hmm. so, battle bunker would be interesting um what else was there? Okay. We're going to talk about this a lot next week. But mm -hmm. we have to bring it up so that people know we are planning to talk about it more yeah. next week. Mm -hmm. But it is the um, the 3K in Canada from Spartan has been axed. It's not happening, the one in Mount Trump Um I'm disappointed. I think you the same. Yeah, it was on my schedule. <laughs> I was kind of planning some things around it, so. Yeah, me too. So very disappointing. <clears throat> and, you know, there's obviously some other stuff that's disappointing with Spartan too that they've got news, and we will promise you that next week we will have very much a show featuring Spartan where we're going to talk about this very much in depth. Yeah. Um, so it hasn't slipped by us. We're, we're not putting it off. Uh, well, yeah, we are putting it off. In reality, it was supposed to be this week's show, but I screwed that up because I could not make the original time with our guests, so we had to reprogram for next week. Uh, so hopefully that goes well. But um, yeah, it 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 it's disappointing. It's mm -hmm. it's sad. I was really hope that was like going to be my main OCR for this year. You know, so yeah, sucks. I actually, so to tell you the truth, I've been looking at this. So um, right now. I saw two other 3Ks that I could think about taking part in. Mm -hmm. um, one is Dead End Races having a 3K. Okay. And then the same weekend, there's a Spartan 3K in the Pocono. So it's about a seven-hour drive. Now, I'm considering both. I'm thinking about it. I haven't made any decisions. Um, but the problem is they're on the same weekend, of course. Yeah. That's a problem. And then the other problem is the Spartan one, you have to be invited to. Right? Now, I think I, I think you could get invited a lot. Pretty easy. <laughs> I don't know that I can. The one in Montreal, mm -hmm. I, I think I could have gotten invited to. Yeah. But that one down there, that's a little different. I might not have the connections to pull that kind of swing to get a last, last person invite, you know? Mm -hmm. Don't have that resume, but 
anyway, I think what I'll do is I'll see, I'll, because I'm pretty sure there's a way you can apply for it and I'll apply to get invited and see, because the one test in Jacksonville, I, they were, you know, they were not that they were looking for, they had 45 guys that did not have a full, full women's field, but they had a full men's field. But I, I do think it was, again, it was free. And, yeah. you know, so I think with this one, probably this will be costing, this will be part of the elite series. So, I don't know. Maybe I can get invited. Maybe I can't. We'll see. We'll pull some strings and see what I can do. But mm. anyway, I don't know. And then the dead end race one. I mean, I don't They have, don't think they've done a 3K before. I do think that that place where they have a course extreme or not a course extreme, North 45 is a great facility. But yeah. generally, the terrain is not favored to me. It's not some of my favorite running terrain. Just mm -hmm. personal preference and what works for me. So, I'm like, uh, I don't know. We'll see. And I don't know. <sighs> yeah. Well, well, again, we have to see how this 3K is received because you don't necessarily know if if it's everyone's kind of gunning for these 3Ks, then it, it will be harder to get into. And that's the tricky part about them limiting the numbers to 45 is it's hard for you to plan your racing schedule because it's not like you can just sign up and just plan no. to go. You have to actually make sure that you get in. And here's the thing, though, though, I think less people are, are going to be going because like the high-end elites that we're planning to are even still has it now because they cut the prize money yeah like big time so again this yeah. is us not talking about <laughs> <laughs> i don't know we'll see we'll make some phone calls uh, yeah elites elites follow the money so yeah yeah hmm yeah, who knows? What I haven't looked yet is now with Spartan cutting the money, the Savage series pay more. I have not seen what Savage is doing. I don't know. I know they're having a series, they're having a full series, but yeah. I actually think the Savage series might pay more now. I'm going to have to look that up and see. Oh. Which is going to be, be a interesting. Smart move. Yeah. You know, I don't know. <laughs> will be i do know that i do believe it pays deeper anyway so wow crazy times ahead mm -hmm. we'll see um so those were the things that i really wanted to, to to talk about and yeah like i said 3k talk spartan talk tons next week tune in for that mm -hmm. um yeah so that's what i've got um other than that i think i'm good do you do is there anything else that you had to sign this up for this week no, I didn't. No. <laughs> no. I didn't. It's been a crazy week. <laughs> yeah, I do want to straight out say congrats. Your event was amazing. It Thank was you. everything that it should be. You guys did a great job. Your gym family was amazing. Thank you, Dana, especially for the place. Yeah, that was awesome. I <laughs> really appreciate it. <laughs> um yeah, you you got you you guys killed it. It was really good. It couldn't have couldn't have I don't think it could have went better. So congratulations. Yeah. And Thank hopefully you. more to come. And again, the next deck event in our area will be later this month mm -hmm. at uh, SO Fitness in Georgetown, Holton, however you want to say it. Yeah. It is in Georgetown. Yeah. And uh, we'll yeah. be there. Are you there for that one? I'm sorry. I don't know. Are you? Are you no, there? I'm doing the Around the Bay 30K that weekend. So that's right. Yeah. That's, it's that's one of these things where a. I have to do this race because the last time I did it, I had such an awful experience. So I kind of want to redo it so that I can purposely have a more positive experience and not think so negatively about this race, but that's about it. <laughs> so that's what I'll be doing is the 30 K around the Bay. Well, your half is a good setup for that then. Yeah, it was perfectly planned that way. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Well, I will be there yeah. and Ryan will be there and we'll be having a great time. Yeah. And cheering everybody on and doing our own race and hopefully, you know, maybe setting some more PRs, maybe cracking 14. That's the new goal to get in those yeah. 13s. That's, you're there. You're there. I'm so close. <laughs> <laughs> it's like breaking your four minute mile. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But um, <laughs> it might, it's pretty much exactly the same. No. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I think I can, but I mean, it'll yeah. depend a lot on the setup and the day and everything. If I can transition my bike from the relay to what I, to, to next week then, or to yes. the next strong, then I'll be fine. So mm -hmm. I think that's it though. I think I might have to be a little more brazen and put a little more output on the stations rather than quite being so relaxed on the beginning. Maybe just 
take maybe an extra five just off. Take a of chance. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see how it goes. All right. Mm -hmm. Take us home, Beth. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening. And to everyone again who supported our Deca Mile in the Mall, um, we appreciate it so much. Um, it was everything that we could have hoped for. So, and until next time, thanks for listening.